Let's talk about muscle soreness. When I was thinking about the next topic for the channel, I asked my wife, hey, maybe you have any ideas. And she said, well, you could explain, for example, why I'm getting sore all the time after the exercises. So I'm like, okay, challenge accepted. So um, the video that we have today is going to be about muscle soreness. And I'll try to explain why you get sore after the exercises. And actually, an interesting fact, is that some people are more prone to getting the domes, so to say, I'll explain what it means later, than others, so soreness in general. And I'll also tell you why that is. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Tom, and this is a channel about orienteering, running with the map and compass, and hope you have fun over here. Some time ago, we've launched the Patreon page, so if you want to support us financially because you think we're doing an awesome job to but by delivering this kind of content to the orienteering community, then you can do this. All of the chats that we have on our channel since some weeks ago are um, always recorded with the content that is structured for YouTube, but also there is, also a, there, there is always a significant part of the chat that goes only to the Patreon page. So if you're interested in watching those, and I assure you that there are lots of interesting things over there, then go to Patreon, the link is in the description of this video, and check it out. And of course, thanks to all the people that do support us already, we love you. All right, now back to the soreness, and let's talk about what soreness is and where it comes from. Let's start with lactic acid, because for many years there was this belief that the soreness that you get in your muscles after an intense workout is because of the lactic acid that is also produced inside your muscles. Okay, let's talk about this for a moment. What is lactic acid? Where does it come from? So to, to explain it, let's first think about how muscles actually work. When you're doing some jogging, long running, but without high intensity, then basically your muscles are producing energy using the oxygen. But when you switch to more intense forms of workout, like sprinting, for, for, for example, um, plyometrics, weightlifting, uh, high intensity interval training, for example, then after these workouts, or during these workouts actually, the muscles, they do not produce or pro produce only a small portion of the energy from oxygen, but most of the energy they, they produce is without the oxygen because the flow of oxygen is our, in our body is limited, the, the, the speed of it. So the muscles are just not getting enough oxygen to work like in, a, in the first example. Therefore, they have to produce an energy in a different way and they do that, but a byproduct of that chemical reaction really that is happening is lactic, lactic acid. And this is what causing this acid to be produced and then stored in the muscles for a while after those high intensity exercises. But does that mean that the lactic acid is the source of muscle soreness? No, it is not. So the, um, the research so shows that actually the lactic acid that has been produced in the muscles during an intensive workout is flushed out by our body uh, usually within uh, the next 30, 60, maybe 90 minutes, and it's gone, right? And now think about it. when does the muscle soreness actually kick in? It's very often that it kicks in the next day or even two days later. So um, the recent research definitely shows that lactic acid is not the thing or is not something that causes the soreness of our muscles. What's the problem then? Well, the problem is that our muscle fibers during those intense workouts are getting damaged. There are, it's called micro damages, uh, micro torn, torns in our, in our muscle fibers. And this is what causes the inflammation later on in those places where those torns appear because the body needs to fix those areas. So naturally there has to be inflammation and there has to be the repair process that it will be happening over there. And it will take some time and that's why we will feel sore after such portion of exercises because our body is working in those area, making our muscles better and stronger really. So it's, it's actually not that bad of a thing 
because anytime these kind of micro torrents appear, it's a signal for our body that, okay, these muscles, they do not uh, get, they are not strong enough to do the work that apparently the person is trying to do. Therefore, we need to build them stronger. So each time you feel this kind of soreness, it's actually a signal that your body is going to rebuild your muscles and make them a tiny bit stronger. But of course, it's also not a good idea to push yourself into those kind of workouts that make you sore all the time, because that's usually a short way to injury, uh, partly because anytime there isn't this inflammation process, these muscles are a little bit weaker, so you have to be a tiny bit careful around them, and that's why it's better to actually build up uh, your way to those harder exercises with smaller increase, increases, smaller increments. So I mentioned earlier that I'm going to tell you what DOMS is, and I think this is a good moment for it. So D-O-M-S is a delayed onset muscle soreness. Uh, so the, the sore muscles I'm talking about, that's exactly it. Now the question, which is quite interesting, is can you avoid DOMS in general at all, right? Um, and I think that the answer is that sometimes you can and sometimes it's almost unavoidable. I think that it's almost unavoidable when you're introducing um, a new exercise or new set of exercises into your training plan, training regime that is hitting the uh, muscle parts that you haven't been really using before. So an interesting example is, for, uh, is, is me, uh, just from this week, because on Monday I started a new set of exercises. And this new set of exercises, it contained uh, several portions of squats and lunges. lunges. So I, I very of, very rarely do that, and of course, as as I was expecting, a day after those exercises on Tuesday, I really felt sore in my um, muscles on my thighs, the, the two-headed muscles on my thigh. So um, it, it's just sometimes unavoidable. But also another interesting question is, is it possible that some people are more prone to getting sore muscles after the intense exercises than others? Let's find out. Okay, so now we get to my favorite part of this video. Mary, pay attention. It turns out that there are differences between people and unfortunately, unfortunately for those people that are on this worst side, it's genetic. So there is nothing really that can be done about it. And we definitely spotted those, those differences between ourselves, between me and Mary, my wife, because I get sore very rarely, she gets sore quite easily, right? So where is the difference coming from? Well, there are two genes that play a role in the whole process of getting sore. I mean, they don't play a role in the process of getting sore, but they affect how sore you get and if you get sore at all. The first one is called ACTN3, alpha accident 3 gene. And the second one is MLCK, myosin light chain kinase gene. Okay, let's focus on the first one first. And I'll be reading some, of, some, some interesting things over here. So uh, it has been discovered that the ACTN3, so the first one I've mentioned gene, is linked to sports performance. And there are three types of that gene, okay? The first one is called XX. And people with XX form of this gene have a deficiency in the ACTN3 protein and instead produce more of the ACTN2, so a different protein, okay? Um, so the XX form of this gene makes those people have less ACTN3 and they have more ACTN2. Now, ACTN2 seems to be connected to endurance, okay, and ACTN3, the one that they are, they are lacking, is related to power, speed, and fast twitch muscle fiber. And that's exactly what we observe between me and my wife. So I am faster, I am stronger, I do well on hill climbing, and she's definitely, definitely more, uh, and how do you say it? She has more endurance than myself. So I think that with, even without testing for these genes, I think it's a pretty good bet. But let's keep reading. So people with RR or XR form of the gene 
They make more ACT M3, obviously, right? And are better at power and speed than endurance, right? So that would be me. So, um, in, and in other words, a deficiency in ACT M3 protein can mean reduced performance in speed and power, right? So that's what Mary is, in my opinion, at least. Um, so, um, as a conclusion, right? The, the, so, how does this relate to DOMS, to, to the soreness? So, the ACTN3 protein may reduce the muscle damage caused by eccentric muscle contractions. Okay? Therefore, a deficiency in ACTN3 can mean that the person is prone to more muscle damage and therefore experience more resulting soreness. There were quite a lot of studies done around this area already uh, among weightlifting community marathon runners, half mile marathon runners, and basically they all show the same thing. So I think it's kind of conclusive at this point in time. Um, also, this, the second gene, MLCK, basically works the same way. It, uh, it, it, it defines whether you're prone to muscle soreness or not. So I'm not going to go into the details of this, but uh, in general the conclusion that we can draw from this is that whether you're prone to getting sore or not is genetic. Okay, so this brings us to the last question for today. Is there anything you can do to limit the soreness that you will get after the exercises uh, that you're planning? And I think that there are four sensible advices that I can give you. So the first one is start with smaller loads, right? So don't start with something that is super hard, super heavy. Start with smaller, easier exercises. Almost each, each exercise has a progression to it, so start with those easier steps. Another one is, when you're increasing, make those increments also small, so that you're not leaping into you know, a big difference in weights, big difference in uh, difficulty of the exercise. So take those steps slowly and that will help you prevent the soreness also. Um, another one is alternate. If when you're doing the increases, so you're trying to get better and better and you will be changing your exercises. So you maybe you will be doing more repetitions, maybe you will be putting more weights. So try to make those increases and alternate between adding more intensity and adding more load. Okay, so don't add more load and more intensity at the same time, but alternate between those. And the last one is also alternate between the muscle groups that you're hitting. So let them rest. You know, if one muscle group is tired, let it rest for one, two, three days, maybe, depending on how hard it was hit. And in the meantime, target other muscle groups and help them grow while the other, um, the other muscle groups are regenerating, recovering. And that's all what I have for you today. I hope this was informative. If it was, consider giving this video a like uh, and put a comment in to let us know what do you think about muscle soreness. Are you getting sore? Do you belong to those people that are prone to muscle soreness? Or maybe you're just like me who, um, and, and you get sore very, very rarely. Um, I'll, be, I'll be definitely interested to learn uh, what is the spread of uh, this gene pool, let's say, inside the orienteering community. All right, this is all. If you've loved it, also you might consider subscribing to the channel and I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos.